we go before we go into some ramps i want to remove uh, some unuseful data over here because i don't need to use those guys so let's go here to edit parameter interface and let's select those folders make them invisible can apply this except so now i have those guys here and what i want to do is basically maybe add some folders so i let a folder here on the root let's call this forces and let's add another folder called ramps so let's grab all those guys here on the forces so the search radius and number of points they all let's just separate them maybe just to make like a difference between those then we have the um point cloud texture what is it? oh this is our path this is our path let's rename it Let's call this uh, the curve path and let's drag it here on the top level because like main parameter, if it doesn't have a path, we will not use it. And up force, attraction force and orbit force, cool. So apply, accept. Now we have the proper representation for those parameters. We have the ramps, which, which is empty by now. And we have the radius which we can choose depending on the scale and we have the r force multiplier which is given here and i will change them a little bit later so it's like 10 maybe two all right and it's looking interesting okay another thing i want to choose here is go to burst and use the negative jitter burst time because i don't like the slices with those particles so now they randomly created with some jitter and there's no slices anymore great nice and thing tube cool let's save it so what about rams why I should add them let's go to our pop-up and let's just drag it over here and let's add some ramps so what is the ramp if we add the ramp parameter and choose the spline ramp which I want to use, we have like a curve which is representing the changing of our some parameters or attributes depending of some range. So we can say, okay, let's this point will be the first point on the curve. And this point will be the last point on the curve. So I linearly can increase the force influence for our particles depending on the curve position or depending on the points position on this curve. So somehow I need to take all my points from this curve and make them um, normalize it so i want that my first point will have the number zero and the last point have the number one or attribute one so point somewhere in the middle will have the number 0 0.5 and etc etc and the first way we can go is is using the maximum sambus numbers except of the maximum segment lens and the reason for that because if you look at our point number, we have 103 points here. Each point have number. But if we drag uh, our cursor and timeline, you can see that our points amount is changing. So if we link to our point number, let's see, we can divide it by 103 and then each point depending on her number will have the number between zero and one but this number will be change will change
So yeah, we can find the maximum point number and divide by this value. Uh, or we can set the maximum segments here. Okay, the maximum segments and say, okay, I will create like 100 segments at this number will not change um, with the changing the shape of the curve. Or we can play with the Y parameter. Now, um, my last point from the curve will ha always have the same Y position. And my first point also will have the same Y position. So back geometry spreadsheet, our smaller and the bigger value from the Y position will be always the same. So what we can do is somewhere here after a simple, we can add the attribute triangle node and say that uh, we can um, <clears throat> say I can create some float attribute, which we can call normalized position, and it will be uh, equal to our position by y divided by 50. So now our end position attribute will add to each of the point the unique uh, attribute which will be from 0 to 1 depending of the position on the curve. All right. So now we can apply this attribute to our, let's call this add and position. position. Let's copy that. Now let's get back to pop network. Let's back to our vortex forces. Let's grab another one point cloud filter. Point cloud filter from those point clouds. And let's take our, oops, sorry. Let's take our end position. Okay, so now how I can use this end position? It's just like a float. So let's look in here. And ah, oh, this is not because it's, it's not an attribute of my points. Cool. And how I can use this end position? Let's rename it. So now here uh, from this value, we're going to have it's not a vector channel, it is a float channel have the float number between zero and one, and I can connect this float to the ramp. So where's my ramp? Let's, uh, let's, let's play with the orbit force because it's um, the much more representative because if we change the speed radius, we can apply different shapes. So add another one, or actually we can connect this ramp to our multiplier, just put this here and let's call this ramp um, orbit orbit ramp like here so now let's see how we will what change we have here now we can see that our orbit speed is changing from zero here and bigger there okay now if you want to change the shape like so play a bit and it will multiply using this end position And even if, if it's visually not too representative, yeah, it's looking like it has the same. Uh, let's change this like one and smaller here, like here to zero and decrease the attraction multiplier to one. Okay, you can see a bigger rotation and then smaller rotation 
and then after this we can increase and shrink it up again. I just want to look on my curve. Yeah, here you go. And bigger and it rising again. We can simply check this thing because you know we can always try to output this parameter to some test like a bind export some perm I don't know like make it test test and come on and connect this test to the value output uh, from our end position and get back here choose find this test somewhere here you can find that we have some values between 0 0.02 and 0 0.05 because this is the closest points we can find on the bottom area of my curve and if you look at the maximum and play you can see that this number is rising 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 make it bigger and bigger and bigger and till the moment when our particles will go here to the the upper curve position they will have the settings closer to one which just mean that now many of those particles have um, values between zero and one and that's how our ramp is working so for those particles which will have positions closer to zero they will have this value for, uh, particles which have a position like 0.5 will have this value and particles in the top of our curve will have this value so we can create a simple ramp to control the forces along the curve so remove this test we can see that it's working and it's very important to have a proper order because if we multiply our vector uh, attribute by the float attribute it's very important that our vector is in the first input and the float is another one because we can multiply vector by the float but not otherwise okay so now we can set the same ramp parameter for each of those uh, forces so i'm going to say this and connect to this multiply let's call this what is this that's uh, actually our up force okay so up force ramp and it should be the spline ramp and that's one parameter add for our attraction connect here multiply oops multiply there that's gonna be my uh, attraction ramp okay going like this and you should be the spine ramp too All right so go down here and let's play with those guys again maybe i will put them here on the wrap folder so they just up for us let's do the proper order so we have the up for it first attraction for us next one and the orbit one the third come on let's down here oh that is ramp yeah except so now we had all those ramps over here here cool so let's play with those ramps I don't know, maybe let's play with orbit ramp, make it a little bit smaller uh, in the first stage. Like bigger here. Like point three here. And you at one like point five. Oh point one, point five. This guy should be like here. Maybe a little bit upper and this guys go to value of one and the attraction ramp basically the more attraction i want to have in the start and if i want to have a more wider circle here um at the end we can set attraction force like uh, i don't know, like point 0.1 maybe it's so not too big attraction and play like here add some difference 
in this area. Okay, and with the up force, um, mainly I know maybe like put 0.5 here and position it maximum there. So uh, small like the two times smaller force on a start and the bigger force at the end. Let's play with this and get back to our forces. Let's just adjust some forces here. Maybe add a bigger, uh, bigger orbit multiplier. Let's say a 50. Whoa, yeah, baby, that's how it's working. And now the up force bigger, maybe like city, the rising up faster, and now attraction bigger attraction like uh, three. So attraction force is very sensitive in our case. And yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good now, it's creating nice shape. Maybe a little more orbit into play like 65. And yep, yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> again, go, <clears throat> again, go to ramp and with some orbit I don't know, it's too fast over here, so maybe put it down a bit. Okay, now it's more appropriate. Uh, let's make it smaller. Okay. And yeah. It's looking good. Yeah, the traction. Yeah, maybe like this point four. And yeah, maybe point three, point twenty-five, <clears throat> whatever smaller. And the up force again. Yeah, I mean point five and one should be fine. So what else I can I just I don't know one way to make, I think that orbit force should be a little bit smaller, like fifty. And play with this like here. Maybe choose a different presentation, maybe non-linear, maybe like casual room. Should be preferred. Yeah, you can see as we can play with the shape <clears throat> as we want, we can drag it here. But <clears throat> the thing is, we have a very, very, you know, a small result. We need to add a little bit of random here. Just a little bit of random. And how we can apply, we can use a random node from the point number. Add and multiply this random multiply somewhere uh, or let's multiply it to our orbit force so connect this here and now the multiplication but randomly we create just values between 0 and 1 so let's go and add a fit range and set um, the promote parameter so you should be a minimum random and you should be a maximum random go here and where you are okay let's put it i guess to the forces i don't know like here and add another separator 
accept. Yeah. So here we have from zero to one, and we can set um, like point seventy five to one point five. I don't know. Just to add a more random to the shape, so it's not like not like here. It's very very. I don't know, but I should have more attraction multiplier, I guess. Still a bit big here. Ups at you. Go to ramp and maybe make it smaller for my orbit force 2.9. It will still create very, very you know, huge vertex, a big radius. So maybe not linear again. Get no room. Play with those settings. Okay. So that's exactly what we have on this stage. And now let's add a little bit of noise because it's very, very flat. And I think that noise should be fine for our vortex.